I will translate in Jenna speak. You want personality diversity. That's what you are looking for. That is the recipe for a good football team. Uh, Coach, is there such a thing as too many good guys on a football team? Well, I, I don't know if that's what Michael was saying. Um, look, at this. there's such thing as too many of one thing one time, in any yeah. company, any community. Yes. And I think diversity and mixture is really important. I think Michael Bennett loves to play the game of football and likes the camaraderie and the different ca uh, characters on any football team. That's what I hear him say. Right, but also I don't think that he would want 20 guys like himself. No question. No question. Too many of the same thing is not going to be good recipe for anything. I mean, I think what, and I didn't, I, listen, I just listened to a little bit that you had right there, but you're really talking about locker room chemistry, mm -hmm. being around guys that you get along with, and more, more importantly, I mean, to me, I, th I, watching Michael Bennett play, I see a passionate football player. And my guess is that Michael Bennett wants a lot of the guys that are passionate about it. And to him, he's saying, hey, passion in football can be a mixture of good guys, whatever, di different type of guys, guys that want to run the streets, whatever they want to do. But I think he's looking for a mixture. And he obviously likes to have fun playing football. Right. I think the, um, the word thug is used in, in the wrong cases a <laughs> lot of times. Now, I think what he meant was, he wants guys who are tough. That's how I took it. Because you yeah. cannot play pro football Absolutely. unless you have decided that I'm willing to take this beating and more so than the next guy. One of the things I used to tell other guys, because they used to ask me all the time, Chris, what makes you different? And I said, man, I'm willing to get knocked out. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to get hurt to be able to live out my dream. And I ask guys when I play against them, are you willing to suffer that today? And that, to me, set me apart. And I wanted a bunch of guys who had that type of interest in football. Now, I learned through the late Denny Green, through his mentor, Bill Walsh, the late Bill Walsh, in his book. He said, on a 53-man roster, you can have five bad guys. That's what he said. You can have guys that talk trash. You can have guys that you're going to have discipline problems with. But five is the number. Because in a locker room, you have clicks. Typically, the clicks are five to ten. The reason why Coach said there would be ten, um, he'll take five of them, because that means the click will be able to handle. You'll have nine guys surrounding that one guy. You'll, you'll see the offensive linemen. There might be a couple defensive linemen in that group. You'll see the DBs, potentially, and the wide receivers. You'll see the quarterbacks. You're always going to have a group around them. So you have clicks inside the locker room. I prescribe to that theory. You need five guys. I mean, they might be a little bit touched, because all of us, I played 16 years in the NFL came in in 1987, got knocked out in 2002. All of us, to play this game, you got to be a little touched. you got to be a little moved in your – there's something different about you. But I stick to the toughness part. Because in the National Football League, I'm going to tell you who we got. Well, yeah, we do have some thugs. But we got every country guy that was grown up on a farm and yeah. is tough. He playing in the NFL. We got every city kid that was tough at the park on his block – He's playing the NFL. NFL. Every little, every little country little boy who grew up in Ohio in the Midwest, Pennsylvania. Where's Mark Slareth from? Alaska. Alaska. <laughs> yeah. so we, we can throw Alaska again. So yeah. if you're tough, we throw Alaska they will again. find you. And I yeah. believe that that tough <laughs> and then smart. Those are the two ingredients that you need to be to be a successful football player in the NFL. If you're going to build a team, you want to build it on smart and tough. And I, I was, I, what I hear you saying, Chris, is. As a, you're going to respect a fellow teammate that plays the game as tough as you play it. Yes. And once teammates recognize that in the guys that they're playing with, that's when you get this. And I don't have all my stuff all wrapped tight, Coach. So I'm willing to accept another guy exactly. with his blemishes, with his personality flaws. Yes, because I'm no finished product, and yeah. I'm tough to work with myself. Before, before I get <laughs> into this, this is literally is the first I'm hearing of this. Before I, before I get into this, you guys off the air before when we were talking about the segment coming up, you guys both keyed on the word smart. Now, Michael Bennett doesn't say the word smart there, but you guys both amongst each other, coach and player, talked about how important the intelligence factor is, football intelligence, and how that's something that gets forgotten. We call guys tough or guys soft. We, we, the, the importance to have smart football players on your team, and those guys can be tough or they can be praying like – tough. I'm not saying tough guys don't pray or the other way around, but they can be what Michael Bennett described as Russell Wilson or as Michael Bennett described himself. Yeah. The intelligence is the common denominator between Michael Bennett and Russell Wilson, right? Like that's one of what you guys were discussing during, yeah, off the air. You're going nowhere in the NFL if you don't have a Russell Wilson. 
Okay. You're absolutely right about that. <laughs> what do you mean? If you don't have someone who is a leader, I don't care if he touched the ball every time. Okay. If your middle linebacker is not Russell Wilson or have the characteristic of Russell Wilson, you can't win in this league. You need leaders. Now, leaders absolutely. lead different ways. Russell absolutely. is leading within his character. Tom Brady is leading within his character. They do it two separate ways, but you need guys like that. What Chris hit on is, is really, really key. When you've got a football team, and I would venture to say that these past Super Bowl winners have that guy at the quarterback position and have that guy at the Mike linebacker position because you need it on both sides of the football. And when you don't have that, that's where it can get skewed a little bit. But going back to the smarts, that you, Nick, that you were talking about, in this day and age in football where the offenses are so complex and defenses are getting complex mm -hmm. as well, if you don't understand football as a player, you can hurt your football team. Understand your job and what it takes to do your job mentally and if all 22 guys are doing that in the course of a game, you got a better chance of winning that game. And to Chris's point about where it was Denny Green that said you can have five guys. Yes. Like, the, we have seen that tried and tested throughout time on multiple sports teams in different sports. Now, the number is smaller in the NBA because the locker room's smaller. Mm -hmm. You can have some tough dudes on an NBA team. But once that number reaches a tipping point, all of a sudden, you start becoming the Blazers of the early 2000s, and it starts spilling out to where it's untenable. And once the number in a football team becomes more than a half dozen or so, you start having some of the problems the Cincinnati Bengals had in the early 2000s. Where Because mm -hmm. here's what I believe, having not been in the locker room, you tell me if I have it right. You're going to have, let's say it's five. Five guys that are on this end of the spectrum. Five guys that are on this end of the spectrum. And then you got your 40 guys in the middle that can kind of go either way. Mm -hmm. If all of a sudden, on the tough end of the spectrum, it's 9-10. On the Russell Wilson end of the spectrum, it's 2 or 3. Those guys in the middle, it's easier for them to start to go gravitating way that way. Yeah. And then you can have problems. You can have problems. But his uh, – listen, I didn't like Bennett's use of the word thug because that word is thrown around racially charged all the time. And right. so it was probably – a poor choice of words by him. But Chris, you tell me all the time, man, you have to be a special kind of crazy to play this game. You do. You have Amen. to, you have to, and Mark Schlaer says all the time, you have to put your body through things that your body and brain are telling you, I should I not go through that. in order to have a successful long career. Now, you can be a devout Christian and do those things. Yes, you can absolutely. be a, a, a street hustler and do those things. Right. But you, you've you got it. It's one of the reasons why you always joke about NBA players, not no tough guys playing pro basketball. Right. The tough guys are playing pro football. Because, because it's a different type of tough. And as far as the Christianity, I think that we've gotten way beyond that, that you can't be a good Christian and be a great football player. In my heyday, Coach will tell you, we had a group of guys that we prayed, we, had, we, had, we, we talked on the phone um, about once a month, we went to conferences together, we went on vacation together. Let me tell you who those guys are. Deion Sanders, Daryl Green, Chris Carter, um, That's pretty good um, Kurt yeah. Warner, Reggie White, mm -hmm. Aeneas Williams. Like, I think those guys can play for any football team. And this is one thing that I found out. Through dealing with the craziest guys, I mean, the guys that would do the most unusual things that I've ever seen, guys who you didn't necessarily have a lot of respect for. Let me tell you what happens about 15 minutes before the game. Everybody gets spiritual no because they know what they're getting ready to do with their body, and these guys don't come to Bible study. But That's when the coach point. says, That's let's get here and pray, all 53 oh, of them come together and realize, you know something? I might not even believe what he believed. But whatever they're getting right now, give me a little touch of that before I go out here Amen. and risk my health. Amen. That's a great point. And look at, and that goes, that's throughout every locker room in the NFL. So we can't, we can't cross, we can't go across it, but yes. about different areas in Christianity. We're talking football. The common denominator, what I hear both of you saying is, as a teammate, we're going to respect each other if we're passionate about the job that we're doing. Because if I know you're passionate, I know you're passionate, Jenna, you're passionate, Always. we got a better chance of winning this thing if we can respect each other and know that we're passionate right. about Coach, what Coach, if you have one quality, would it be height, would it be speed, would it be getting to the quarterback, or would it be the love for the game that you love? Love and passion for the game of Wouldn't football. Wouldn't it be funny if he said height? <laughs> the, I, no, no, only because I need a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> man, you set me up. Well, I got to bring you back, man. Yeah. That's some good stuff. You're good. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.